What's up guys, Corvus95 here and welcome to another episode of Pokemon Blue. So on the last episode we finished off this floor and the downstairs floor on the right hand side of the SSR. In today's episode we will hopefully finish off the rest of the SSR and perhaps start on the gym. So let's go down these stairs first. Luxury line after trainers. Okay, thank you. Don't repeat yourself. Let's do this floor first before... Actually, this may be the floor we're meant to be on. And there's a Snorlax. Thank you for that data. So I don't know why they give you that data, because you have to battle Snorlax. Oh, I'm sick of double... I'm sick of double clicking on people and accidentally making them speak to me again. Very antisocial. Hopefully the new recording setup is going very well guys. Tell me if you prefer it to the old one. I've moved things around a bit, so there should be less background noise. Let's go for a dig on the Machop. See how much it does. It's 2 a KO, which is nice. We do take a lot of damage, however. So I think we're going to have to switch out into Lindbergh. It would be really nice to actually get a ghost type. And since there's only the Gengar line in this generation, that is ghost type. My options are sparse. But maybe when we get to Lavender Town, I will attempt to catch one. Tentacool. Faraday, I guess. I, oh yeah, I forgot to mention, between episodes I did go and heal all my Pokemon at the Pokemon Center. If there had been a place to heal them up on the boat, I would have done that during the episode, but it's quite a long walk to the Pokemon Center without running shoes or a bike. So, I thought I'd cut that out of the episode. We go to level 21, very nice, for Faraday, and we'll carry on along with Bolt. I am going to use a Potion on Diglett, because it took a lot more damage than I wanted it to. Let's go for this guy next. Okay, this is Sailor then. So the Bolt is departing soon. Well, obviously, after we get what we need. It wouldn't leave with us still on board. And unfortunately, when it does leave, however, we won't ever be able to come back this way. We'll have to say goodbye to the magical truck of doom and destiny and Mew and... Spoilers. Mew isn't under the truck. It's going to send out a Shelder. Let's switch out into Ruby for this one. Go for the Vine Whip. Should kill. Does kill. Very good, Ruby. Ruby's actually really strong. Surprisingly so. Like, I was expecting it to be able to take out most things by itself, but it pretty much one-shots any water type. Which still surprises me every single time. So yeah, I think this is actually the floor we're meant to be on, to find the captain. I'm gonna head this way to go to the kitchens, because there's some hidden items on this floor. Only trash here, that's gonna get really annoying. That message will get so incredibly annoying that I'll want to kill myself by the end of probably next episode. 
I know in Fire Red and Leaf Green, there's a lot of berries that can be found in the kitchen. Unfortunately, there seems to only be a great ball. Which is a decent item. Yeah, so just the great ball. And we can now go to the captain's room. Of course I have to do the trainers on this floor. But after this we will go to the captain. I may pause midway through the episode so that I can go heal up before I have to do the rival battle. A goldie. Maybe I shouldn't be leading with Diglett since everything is super effective against me. Let's go Faraday. Goldeen does have pretty decent physical attack. So I have to watch out for that because Faraday's physical defense is terrible. We do however get a crit and take him out. He's going to use Tent Cool. We can use Bud Free, Amethyst for this. Cotton's not getting much of a look in at the minute, but that's just because everything is basically neutral against it. We do half, he's gonna get an acid off, which is super effective. Ooh, Amethyst goes down very often. Be careful, Amethyst. 21, trying to learn supersonic, no thanks. No. Yes. Good. Goldeen. Switch out. Into... Ruby. Combine with. Take it out. Come on. And it does. Without a crit. Level 23, so I can't really use Ruby very much anymore until after I beat Surge. Let's... Actually, I think this guy has a Growlithe. So, if he does, we can keep Diggler in. He has a Pikachu, even better. Level 23. That's as strong as Ruby. Let's go for the Dig. As he goes for a Growl. So it's good to know that Pikachu actually outspeeds Diglett if it's four levels higher. Take it out with a critical hit. And Mr. Say is going to get to level 20. He evolves at 26, I believe. And we will be evolving him then. He has the advantage of getting Earthquake seven levels before Dugtrio, but I don't think that's really enough to make up for the lack of power that he'll have by that point in the game. This old man, well done, I can. Okay, so no one really there of importance. A strong or a rare Pokemon? I'd probably go for the rare Pokemon. I'll make it strong myself. Okay, so we should easily pick up a KO here. Diggle takes out the Growler. And he's about to use a Pornita. Which I wouldn't be surprised if it outsped me. I actually outspeed it. And take it out. Said that a bit preemptively there, but. I got crit, so it didn't matter. Yes, yeah, salute me. I deserve all the salutes for that easy two turn battle. Well, I suppose it was four turns. It was two button clicks, basically. Hmm, a rat attack. Out speeds because it went for quick attack. Hopefully it goes for it again. It didn't. I can be in trouble here if I don't crit. 
Okay, Mr. Rossetti, you don't have to get critical hit on every single attack. He's gonna use a Pikachu, we'll see if it, we outspeed it now, we should. It uses quick attack, and it does 10 damage to us, it uses quick attack again. Very stupid of my opponent there. I don't know what he was thinking. We've got another critical hit! Mr. Rossetti gets a critical hit every time he uses Dig. Get this item. Rare candy. Pretty good item to find. Although I'm not really that much of a fan of using them in game. They uh, just don't really do much. It's like I could go. I could easily go get a level just battle wild Pokemon. Yes, yeah, so we're gonna go in this room. And then I'm going to cut away, and I'll be back to this spot in a minute, once I go heal at the Pokemon Center. And I'm back, guys. So, uh, I, if I remember correctly, Gary will use a Pidgeotto first, then he'll have a Kadabra, a Raticate, and his starter Pokemon, which in this case will be a Charmeleon. So that's why Faraday is out front. We're going to lead with him and hopefully pick up an easy KO on the Pidgeotto. So here comes Gary. You may have another Pokemon. Bonjour, Kovus. Imagine seeing you here. Kovus, were you really invited? So how's your Pokedex coming? I already caught 40 kinds, pal. Different kinds are everywhere. Crawl around in grassy areas. Thank you for the advice, Gary. Didn't really need it. I really like Gary's sprite here. Does leave Pidgeotto. There's another Pokemon who... There's another thing that I really like the sprite of. Pidgeotto in Gen 1. Looks really good. Looks a lot fatter than later generations, but we do get a critical hit there as he goes for a Gust. And we'll take out his Pidgeotto pretty easily. What's up next? Raticate. So I think for Raticate, I'm going to go out in the Cotton. It's level 16, so I'm a bit overleveled for this fight. But we do have the gym straight after this. So this is going to be a pretty even battle, it looks like. I'm going to take 3 or 4 hits from me at least, and probably the same from him. Maybe not with Hyperfang. Very powerful. Yeah, it's a 3 kill. And he should go down this turn. Does. And we move on to his third Pokemon, which is the Kadabra. So Psychic has no weakness in the first generation. So I am going to go for... Well, its special defense is much better than... Well, its special stat is amazing, so don't hit it with special moves. Hit it with physical moves, because its physical defense isn't great. Let's go for Fury Attack. And this, that's crit. That's also a crit. So in Gen 1, when a multi-hit attack critical hits. Every single one critical hits. So we get to 22 and now his showstopper is Charmeleon. And this is one of the reasons why we caught Mr. Rossetti. I'm going to go for the dig as he goes for a scratch. Dig should kill I would think. It does and we pick up a victory against Gary with out much trouble really. And the water trainers on this um, boat were giving me more trouble than Gary did. Could itself is really useful. I have a feeling Gen 6 may be the last time we see Cut. I think they may get rid of HMs entirely in Gen 7. Not sure. He feels hideous, he's seasick, I've rubbed his back, rub rub, rub rub. It's a bit like Wub Wub, the end of Star Wars 6. 
the song. In the original one, anyway. I know in the um, special edition they replaced the song. I actually do like the new song as well. Phew! Thank you. I feel much better. You want to see my cut technique? I could show you if I wasn't ill. I know, you can have this. Teach you your Pokemon and you can use it to use cut anytime. Oh no, I have no room for it. Ah! Okay, I will be back in a second once I get rid of some of my items. And I'm back once again. So I've cleared out my inventory, we just have our essentials now, and we can finally get the cut HM. Oh, we'll have to rub us back again. I thought we cured you. Thank you for the first HM in the game. So we can now leave the SSN for what for me is like the 10th time. The first time I actually went back to the Pokemon Center, I put items away. I forgot to put items away. I just healed my Pokemon and then came back to the SSN. Very smart of me, that. Oh, I was kicking myself for that, because I had to walk all the way back. So what we're going to do now is we are going to watch the SSN leave Harbour and the truck to the right. It's not visible at the minute. And it won't be because we can no longer access this area of the game once the SSN goes off the screen. So, to finish off this episode, we are actually going to head in to... Well, well, first we're going to have to teach something cut. And I think I know who's going to end up with it. There's no move deleter in this generation. Which is a bit of a problem. But I prefer not to have Ruby stuck with cut for the rest of the game. I'm going to see who I have in the, pulp, in the PC. I caught a Bellsprout, didn't I? Let's put Amethyst away just for now, because I'm not going to use it in this gym. Let's withdraw. Actually, we have San Seth the Sand Shrew. Seth, you are going to come in useful for me. You're going to be a cut slave. So Seth has cut now, and our lead Pokemon for this gym Obviously going to be Mr. Rossetti. We may do all the work, if I'm being honest. But we'll get started on the gym. We'll probably cut down the tree and get the first ball done. Oh yeah, you have to do it like this. Seth, cut please. Get rid of the tree. And let's get into the gym. Let's talk to this guy. Yo, champ in the making. Lieutenant Search is a nickname. People refer to him as the Lightning American. He's an expert on electric Pokemon. Birds and war Pokemon are at risk, but where of paralysis too. Lieutenant Search is very cautious. You'll have to break the code to get to him. Okay. It's only trash here. It's only trash here. There's a switch over here. Now just because this one was trash before doesn't mean it will be this time. What? I opened the door already. I may skip the trainers and go straight to search. Okay. Right, I wasn't expecting this. I can't actually just stand next to him. So I'm going to stand here. Wasn't expecting this, guys. So I think I'm going to end this episode a little early. And on the next episode, you'll have to join me to watch the Lieutenant Surge battle for our third gym badge. So if you've enjoyed the episode guys, leave a like, hit the subscribe button, get me to 16 subscribers by the end of the week. And from MakeOverse95, I hope you've enjoyed this episode. Thank you so much for watching, and good.